everybody, it's James Lindsay. You are listening to New Discourses Bullets, where I give you a short bullet point type summary of a single topic from woke Marxism you need to understand so we can defeat it. And in this episode, we're talking about one of the most important concepts that we've got to understand to stop what's coming our way, the major tyranny coming our way, the future communism of the 21st century, which is the brand name Degrowth. There is a movement called the degrowth movement, as in we've grown and now we need to degrow. We need to be less grown. We need to get rid of more growth, less GDP growth, less stuff, less gadgets, less happiness, lower standard of living. And we have to degrow our economy to a sustainable circular model. And what you need to understand about this is that it's just communism. It's actually just communism. It's not nearly as complicated as it sounds. So just the idea should horrify you. What will happen if we were to degrow is that we're going to lower standards of living and thus the things that prevent disasters. Like, for example, we've had a uh, the same number or in maybe some cases more natural disasters as the century has proceeded since the beginning of the 20th century until now. But the number of deaths and injuries and damage done by those has gone down because we've had growth. We've had energy to deal with the problems and protect people. Well, we have now within the communist program, this program called degrowth, you will sometimes hear it called being uh, moving beyond growth. So beyond growth is another brand name for degrowth. We're going to get beyond the idea of growing. This idea in the West really took hold uh, after the work of Herbert Marcuse, the most influential Marxist of the 20th century, uh, in America at least, outside of China, where Mao Zedong obviously becomes that character. And so what Marcuse wrote in his most a uh, heavy, heavy selling book, which was One Dimensional Man in 1964, was that the problem with socialism is that it can't produce. And the problem with capitalism is that it's not sustainable. And he says, in fact, that we have to start learning if we're going to get our ideology right, if we're going to transform uh, capitalism into something that can work, that will adopt actually a socialistic mindset, but also elevate socialism to something to something that can produce and work. We have to kind of fuse those together into one idea. And that idea is going to be this circular economy uh, that's at the heart of the degrowth movement or the sustainability movement. Because the problem, again, with capitalism and Marxist thought since the 1960s has been that it's not sustainable. And so we need a sustainable capitalism that will be managed by stakeholders who are the experts in degrowth and managing a so-called circular economy. To give you an idea that this really is Marxist, just this month, being the July-August 2023 edition of what's called the Monthly Review, an independent socialist magazine, the entire issue is dedicated to planned degrowth, uh, eco-socialism, and sustainable human development, which sounds straight out of the United Nations because it is. It's the same program. And in the center of this, which has a bunch of articles about degrowth, the entire issue is dedicated to the concept of degrowth, um, is this de- literal downward spiral in gray, which represents the degrowth of economic systems down to a small green circle in the middle, which is the sustainable circular economy that they want to have as a completely managed and planned controlled economy in the middle. Now, this is based off of the ideas, for example, in part of a Japanese Marxist by the name of Kohei Saito, who wrote a book called, and I maybe I'm not saying that right, and I frankly don't care, uh, who wrote a book called Marx in the Anthropocene a couple of years ago, published, I think, by Cambridge University Press. And the subtitle of this is Toward the Idea of Degrowth Communism. And what Saito argues in this book is that the idea of degrowth communism was Marx's last great breakthrough and perhaps his most important. So as a matter of fact, what he's saying is that the truest, true essence of Marxism itself is degrowth and a sustainable circular economy. Um, he says, in fact, that the, the this is from this book, the planetary crisis provides a material basis for constituting a universal political subjectivity against capital. Because, uh, he says, this is because capital is creating a globalized environmental proletariat whose living conditions are severely undermined by capital accumulation. So by pushing the climate crisis narrative, which is a 
psychological operation. They are able to convince people that we need to degrow to save the planet, and the only people who can administer degrowth in a sustainable circular economy correctly are going to be the global communists that we find at the United Nations, the World Economic Forum, and so on, pushing you know these agendas through ESG initiatives, uh, climate accords, and all kinds of other things. That's the essence of the degrowth movement. Now, in practice, what it's going to do is kill a lot of people. If you degrow, if you follow the net zero protocols or the even more stringent absolute zero protocols that say by 2030 or 2050 or whatever, we're going to be on target by 2030 and reach net zero or absolute zero carbon emissions by those dates, what you're going to find, and they are quite explicit in the documents detailing how this is going to work, is a massive contraction of Western economies that the other countries, like the Global South, which is very significantly and increasingly communist, and China, which is explicitly communist, will be exempt from. They will not have to follow the degrowth plan that is only for the developed West, uh, the Five Eyes nations and in Western Europe, most specifically. And so the idea is to destroy the West and to elevate the more communist areas in the global South and China uh, so that we can have a sustainable and inclusive future, I suppose. Um, here's an article from phys.org. That's P-H-Y-S dot O-R-G. It's a physics uh, it's a physics publication about degrowth in the planet. This was published at the end of July of 2023, so just a few weeks ago as of this recording. It says, as always in academia, degrowth is not a concept set in stone. So, of course, what that means is there are going to be people who get to decide what it means at any given moment. It's, it, that is, it's a basis for arbitrary power and tyranny. It is an open term with different foci and interpretations. There is no unified vision of degrowth. However, in the face of our environmental emergency, there is a surge in the academic literature that is activist and interested in policies and strategies to move from growth to degrowth and to outline pathways beyond capitalism. So there's the punchline right there. This would require a democratization, that's a dual meaning word in communism, of the economy where workers are in control and not shareholders. Oh, so that's communism yet again. So degrowth is communism. It says it would require a profound redistribution of wealth to finance public services and a universal basic income, communism. Such a redistribution of wealth cannot stop at a national level. International solidarity, uh -huh, communism, in particular support for the global south is required for a transition beyond growth. The comeback of degrowth from the early 1970s anti-capitalist theories, in case you wondered where it came from, is not a mere academic exercise any longer. It is driven by the urgency of our predicament. Imagine communists saying there's a gigantic crisis only they can solve, and we solve it by giving them all the power. Now, degrowth is turning into a movement which is rapidly growing, pun intended. Ultimately, this is a struggle against capital. In case you wondered, they've now repeated it like five times in two paragraphs that what they're talking about is communism. The human species will have to respond to the threat of ecocide with rigor and purpose. There is hope that degrowth will still be applied by design and not only by disaster. This depends on how quickly the movement can assert influence and power. So that's the magic spell right there that they cast on people. We're going to degrow one way or the other. We're going to collapse Earth's ecosystems, destroy the planet for our, our habitation, and degrow by catastrophe. Or you can give us all the power and we're going to put you on a planned circular economy where we just happen to be the oligarchical overlords of the Earth running communist theory to run the world, in which case we can stop the total disaster by being our own total disaster. That's the false choice that they give you. That nowhere in here is the idea that greater amounts of energy can help solve our problems. Not all of those greater amounts of energy need to be carbon dependent if that were even to be really a problem, which it's not clear that it is. For example, much of base load electricity and power needs or energy needs could be satisfied by nuclear power, which they were against, because it would ruin, undermine the narrative for the so-called crisis. It's legitimizing their power in the eyes of many foolish people. But we can conclude that degrowth is communism. We can also see that it's written in contradiction and death. The Absolute Zero document from UK Fires, F-I-R-E-S, which was a consortium of the British government together with some of the most elite universities in England, including Cambridge and Oxford, 
put together uh, in 2019 argues that people should start buying warmer clothing now to suffer through cold winters because there will be less energy available for heating. It says there will be absolutely no new steel production and no new cement production. So no new concrete, which means no advanced building projects, and no new steel, which means no advanced building projects. And only recycled steel, which, by the way, you cannot recycle steel to the high level of uh, quality that's required to do the things with steel that we want done with steel in a modern high-tech society. And then simultaneously, we're going to get rid of air travel. We're going to get rid of shipment by air. We're going to get rid of shipment by container shipping and all uh, large craft on the ocean that are not wind-powered. So there'll be no container shipping, and everything will be delivered to you, and your all of your longer-range transportation will be accomplished through light rail. No heavy rail, only light rail. But all those railroad tracks are supposed to be made out of recycled steel, and we're not going to make any new steel, but we're going to lay lots of railroad tracks. Inherently contradictory, inherently going to lead to starvation, freezing to death, and just generally the death of billions. This is degrowth to get down to a circular economy, which means, and to put it completely bluntly, your waste products are your inputs. So therefore, in a circular economy, it's an economy where you eat your own shit. Uh, and images of Bill Gates drinking water that he pressed out of his own feces is, is, is are completely appropriate on TV bragging, this is the future. That's the kind of thing that degrowth is really about. But unquestionably, degrowth is a brand name justifying itself off of the climate crisis with roots back to mid-century communism. Degrowth is a strategy to break the West economically and force it into communist policy using environmental concerns as the justification. And so degrowth is an extremely important concept. It is communism under a new name with new branding and new uh, impetuses. And it's something we all need to start talking about and pushing back. The brand names, again, are degrowth. Beyond growth, net zero, absolute zero. Their magic watchword is emissions. There are too many emissions. We need to degrow. And of course, I'd be remiss when you hear all of this destruction and death combined with degrowth, you can understand that degrowing the population is also a priority. It, we have too many people who want too many things, who expect too high of a standard of living. So we're going to lower their standard of living, but we're also going to start taking steps to lower the overall population, which is a time bomb for humanity that is much more significant and uh, concerning than the potential for whatever they call the climate crisis. So that's what the degrowth movement is about. That's why it's communism, literally in their own words. It is supposed to be Marx's last and final and most complete insight that apparently Marxists through the 20th century missed. The Soviet Union and the CCP up to this point are not exemplars of true communism because they didn't understand Marx's under uh, view of the relationship to nature. So in Saito's book, they... Uh, had been engaging in another Promethean project that will bring the technology to man that will liberate him. And the Promethean projects are not what Marxism is all about. It's about getting back to a primal state of nature, which sounds more like Rousseau than Marx. But at any rate, what ends all of in all of these cases is death. Energy and energy production, which is growth, has provided the ability for human flourishing uh, and sustain, sustainable populations. Uh, and it will continue to unless we continue down this path of human, human and national suicide called the degrowth movement. Mm -hmm.